Hey, this is Joe Gilder from HomestudioCorner.com. Today I want to share with you why I love analog plugins. And it's not for the reason you're thinking. It's not because I think they sound so much better than anything else. The reason I like them is because of this. They've got knobs. Okay? Now, why is that important to me? Well, if you're like me, most of your mixing experience when you were starting out involved using an EQ that looks something like this. Okay? You've got... EQ curves, you've got big visual readout, you can see everything that you're doing. And this is a great learning tool. I'm not bashing this at all. I still use these EQs all the time. However, it can become a crutch to where you're so used to seeing a visual readout that you're not really making decisions based on what your ears hear. You're making decisions on what looks right. And that's generally not a good idea. I tend to prefer to mix with my ears <laughs> when at all possible. So that's why I like things like this. This is the bus, the uh, SSL EQ from Waves. And it's just a basic four-band EQ. When I do a big boost, oops, the only thing that changes is this knob turned. That's it. Nothing else happens. I don't have any sort of visual feedback. I have to. I am forced to use my ears. So I've got this EQ across a drum bus. Let's take a quick listen to the un-EQ'd track. Okay, pretty good sounding, but I'm going to want to do a little bit of EQ to this. A couple of things I know I want to do. I want to cut some of that low mid-range, that boxiness around the snare, that ringing and just kind of overall boxy sound. Uh, that I'm guessing is around 400 hertz, but I don't know for sure. And then I probably want to do a little bit of a boost in the low end to bring that kick drum, the beefiness of that kick drum, out a little bit. Okay, so since I don't have anything to do but knobs to turn, let's turn a few knobs and see if we can get that low mid-range figured out. So I'm going to boost, find the frequency, and then cut it. Yeah, that sounds about right. That's pretty annoying. So that ends up being right around 300 hertz. So let's just dial that back <coughs> and see what it sounds like. Okay, so my gut instinct was to pull it down 5 or 6 dB. And then I looked and saw that it said I was at negative 5 dB, and I thought, oh, no, that's, that's too much. You know what? It's not too much. When I pulled it back up to negative 3, it was, there was still too much of that mid-range. Another example of why it's important to use your ears instead of your eyes. Yes, you want to take the visual feedback into account when you can, but your ears are going to be your best determination determiner of what's right. Now let's adjust this width here and see what sounds best. Right about there sounds pretty good to me. Okay, the next thing I want to do real quickly is boost somewhere in the low end. So let's figure that out real quick. Yeah, about 54 sounds pretty good. That's obviously a little too much of a boost. So let's pull that back. But just adds a little bit extra weight to the bottom end. A little bit of chest pumping goodness okay so that's why i love analog eqs i can turn knobs and listen if you can do that and figure out a way to get a plug-in that'll do that for you i guarantee it'll make your eqing much better